let's take a discussion further uh, about real business cycle model so one you have to understand is that rbc is a deductive approach so there is a theory first and then they test whether data is fitting uh, real world data is fitting to it or not while three equations model is an inductive approach so they start with the real world data and then they build a model around it right so so rbcs models they follow deductive approach right so their their purpose is to test whether technology shocks alone can generate business cycles that is what they want to test right they want to test loan can generate realistic business cycles right so they want to sort of uh, isolate the effect of the productivity shocks without the interference of the market frictions that is uh, uh, or demand factors uh, so they just want to focus on technology shocks so there are few assumptions of the model one there is a representative agent so understand what is meant by representative agent so there is a one infinitely lived household right which is going to represent everyone so there is one household which is representing everyone right and uh, it is that household is making decisions for the entire economy because that one household is is representing everyone there are perfect markets so there is perfect competition and perfect information in all markets right so flexible wages and uh, prices they are going to ensure that the markets are going to clear wages and prices ensure market clearing no involuntary unemployment so because if uh, markets can go up and down if markets are going down your unemployment is going to fall because people firms are going to employ more people right so there are flexible wages 
and there is unnecessarily there is no involuntary unemployment it's like people who want to work they can always get the work at the given wage rate even though that wage is low but if they want to work they can get the work huh? unemployment comes uh, involuntary unemployment comes that uh, uh, there is uh, you want to work but you are not getting the job at the given wage rate that is not the point and you have rational expectations so you understand involuntary unemployment so if there is a i mean if you want to work you can always get a job at the given wage involuntary unemployment is at the given wage rate you are not getting the job and this is not the case voluntary unemployment is at the given wage rate you can get a job but you are not taking up that job you are voluntarily not taking up that job rational expectations so so households they understand the true structure of the economy so they're using all information to form the expectation so they are planning towards the infinite period uh, so you need to understand that so this particular household is understanding the true structure of the economy whatever is the true structure of the economy they are understanding that and they are planning for the infinite horizon and they are using all information which is available that is the characteristic of rational expectations uh, Saving becomes investment. Saving becomes investment, right? So all saving is automatically invested and they becomes the capital stock next period, right? So, I mean, this is connecting the household decision to the future production household is deciding how much to save no that saving is becoming investment that saving is adding to the capital stock next period so don't you think it is the household decision in terms of savings which is affecting how much will be produced later because the amount of the capital stock in future is going to determine how much is going to be the production in future right Right, technology shocks. So only only temporary productivity shocks they disturb the economy. Huh? Only temporary. disturb the economy they have persistence so uh, in the sense that it is not that their effects they fade out instantly so they remain for a certain time and then they go right so it's not that a, a shock has come in one period it is its effect is going to be felt only for this quarter it can be felt for several quarters together. So they have persistence. Fix feed gradually. not instantly right 
And then there are certain long run properties of growth, that is the steady state growth. Steady state growth. So it is based on Ramsey version of solo model. So their exogenous uh, technological progress drives long run growth uh, in what? In, in labor productivity. It is going to drive long run growth in output per worker. It is going to drive long run growth in real wages. Right. So exogenous technological progress. So it's quite silly because uh, Technology steadily improves over time. With labor productivity. And real wages, they grew at a constant rate. In the steady state. So, uh, because uh, this guy, your, uh, but you know what? I mean, labor supply is going to remain fixed in the long run. So, hours per work per person remains constant over the decade. So, if you look at it, look historically also, it is not that people have started working a lot or people have started working very less. So, that amount of hours which everyone is working has more or less constant in the long run. I mean, there can be some outlier here or there, but not everyone in the economy is going to work more or everyone is going to work less. Labor supply is fixed in the long run. Arts work per person remain constant over decades. So you can say this, that RBC, real business cycle models, they treat labor supply as inelastic over time. It doesn't change much, right? Labor supply.
as inelastic over time uh, and what it is focusing is on that in the short run technology changes uh, uh, so uh, if technology is going to change how in short run things are going to move or things are going to change focuses on short run responses to technology changes Mm -hmm. short run responses to technology changes right so it is saying that labor supply is not going to change much over time and it is focusing mainly on the short run responses uh, so the steady state of the long run it is providing a benchmark around which the business cycles are going to fluctuate because steady state is that economy is going to move towards that steady state again and again but business cycles are i mean there can be some up and down around that steady state. So the steady state provides the benchmark path around which business cycles fluctuate, right? Right, so I'll do the short-term properties uh, in the next class. Thank you, Vita.